الحمد لله انشأ البرية من الثراء وكحل أعينهم بنور الحجاء وأوضح لهم محجة الهدى فمن سادر في متاهة الجهل والعماء ومتهافت في هوة لا تستبل نفس من فيها هوى فقبحا لهم قبحا وجدعا لأنوفهم جدعا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله جل رب العزة وعلا وتقدس جلاله تعالى من اهتدى فلنفسه اهتدى ومن ضل فعلى نفسه جنى وعند الصباح يحمد القوم السرى وتنجلي عنهم غيابات الكرى وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله النبي المجتبى والعبد المرتضى ابتعثه الله وأذى الضلالة قد بلغ الزبى وساد واديها فطم على قري القرى وزجر عباب الكفر وطما ولج الفساد بأهله فاستشرى فلم يزل رسول ربي خائضا لجج الوغى ويداعس بطول القنا حتى رد الكفر حفاول الظبا وأعاد الشرك مطموس المنار والصوى فاهتز غصن الدين بعدما ذوى وأضى روضه الناظر سمجاج الثرى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله مصابيح الدجا وصحابته ليوث الشرى وعلى التابعين ومن تبعهم ما جاد الغيث على الثرى وتفتحت الأنوار بالربا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله to our brothers in Iman, and our sisters in faith, and those who will listen to this proposition today or tomorrow, or whenever possible, we commence today's proposition by an ultimate praise of Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We send salutations and prayers upon the seal of all prophets and messengers Muhammadin sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, his household, his companions, on the top of the list, Abi Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, along with Talha, Sa'd, wa Sa'id, wa Amir, Fihirin, and with them as Zubair al-Mumaddahu, and the rest of the companions, those who aided the legacy of our Prophet, peace be upon him, and those who will share this legacy that he left behind, and those who will embrace his path all the way to the day of Ad-Din. We are delighted to be here today to share with you a single verse out of the 6,000 verses that Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed in his glorious Qur'an, more than 6,323. More or less, we only choose one to discuss. Because as a person, as a human being, we do not need all the verses of Qur'an to change our lives. One is sufficient if pondered upon and the lessons therein are gleaned. Our predecessors, some of them, their lives were changed completely as a result of a single verse that they recited from Quran. So as Muslims of today, coming to Friday, listening to the khutbah, khutbah around the world, serves as a medicine. It's a daily checker that khatib prescribes that medicine 
for him to take first and for the people that will listen to his proposition to take it also. So sometimes the medicine may not be sweet, but if it will serve the purpose of healing and curing, that's what the patient needs. And that's what the doctor also prefers. So the verse that we will recite unto you today is not new. You've heard of it before. Peradventure, you've memorized that verse. It's verse 21 of chapter 33. Verse 21 of chapter number 33, Surah Al-Ahzab. Almighty says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا This verse is between a number of verses that came before and a number of verses that came after. So if you take this verse by itself to translate or to explain, you may not get the full picture and the main meaning of this verse. This is verse 21. But if you want to really understand this verse, you have to go back to verse number 9. That's where the story started. And when you get to verse 21, you don't have to stay right there and stop. You have to continue as well, all the way to verse 30, to really get the picture and the meaning of this verse, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ That you have the best and the most beautiful pattern of conduct in the life of Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. In his life, you have the best example. In his life, you have the best behavior. In his life, you have the best decorous conduct. How can you understand? Or how could you even cipher the meaning? So a person might say, well, Allah is talking about how pious he, he was, and rightly so. Allah is talking about how patient he was, and rightly so. A person might say, well, Allah is talking about how successful leader he's, he was, and rightly so. But this is not what the verse is talking about altogether. To get the benefit, let's recite. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ جاءتكم جنود فأرسلنا عليهم ريحا وجنودا لم تروها وكان الله بما تعملون بصيرا إذ جاءوكم من فوقكم ومن أسفل منكم وإذ زاغت الأبصار وبلغت القلوب الحناجرة وتظنون بالله الظنون هنالك ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدة وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا وإذ قال الطائفة منهم يا أهل يثربا لا مقام لكم فارجعوا ويستأذن فريق منهم النبي يقولون إن بيوتنا عورة وما هي بعورة إن يريدون إلا فرارا ولو دخلت عليهم من أقطارها ثم سئلوا الفتنة لآتوها وما تلبثوا بها إلا يسألوا وَلَقَدْ كَانُوا عَاهَدُ اللَّهَ مِنْ قَبْلُ لَا يُوَلُّونَ الْأَدَبَارَ وَكَانَ عَهْدُ اللَّهِ مَسْؤُولًا And the verses continue. But if we say we will recite the whole thing, I think we are going to run out of time. So you can go home to your office, wherever you will be at today, tomorrow, just open chapter 33, verses 9 to 30, and see what Almighty Allah is giving the Muslim Ummah. Why? was the verse لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ was revealed. The unholy confederacy concocted plot against the Muslim Ummah. After the battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, the pagans said, 
We cannot sit in our city for Muhammad and his companions to come and conquer and take our lands and be calling the shots. Come together and be one single hand to confuse, to cause a great deal of anxiety to the beleaguered Muslims so that disbelievers came together. All the tribes came together. See, they were upon different things, but to frustrate Muslims, they say we have to put our differences aside and come together so that we can disturb Muslims and finish and annihilate their faith. That's what they said. So if you see now Muslims like non-believers coming together, colliding together to frustrate Muslims and cause division among Muslims, it didn't start today. It's something that took place before. So this body that came together, the confederates that came together to concat plot and to annihilate Muslims, when they came together, they were called Ahzab. Yahsibuna al-Ahzab alam yadhabu. That's why the surah is called what? Al-Ahzab, the confederates. They came together. The disbelievers among Ghatafan, Hawazan, from different tribes coming together, putting their resources together, putting their strength together, putting their power together, and the one single banner and with one single mission, and that mission is to disturb Muslims and, come, and what? Build the wall of separation so that Muslims cannot stick together, so that Muslims will not be able to flourish. That was the idea. When they came together, Almighty reminded us in his scripture, all ye who believe, remember the favor of Almighty unto you. When the confederates came together and the host came together, if ja'atkum junudun, they all came together with their resources, power, and strength to confuse you, to kill you, to slay all your resources and your own selves. But Almighty said, at that time, we know that you do not have power. You're not strong enough. You as Muslims, you were weak. You as Muslims, you were the minorities. So what happened? Allah said, since you did not have the power to retaliate or the power to retreat or the power to resist whatever they came with, since you were the minority and no strength for you, but we discovered that in your chest you were sincere and in your heart you were together. And in your heart as Muslims you put your resources together. And as Muslims you were behind the same prophet and one single leader and one single leadership. And your focus was the faith of Islam and how to promote the deen and how to make sure the latter generation they get to benefit from the faith. When we realize that your heart were together connected for the benefit of Islam we took care of you and we sent against the host a wind that took them back and were unable to attack you. They came together, but you were already together. Your hearts as Muslims were together. Arsalna alayhim rihan wa junudan lam tarawha and also we sent against them a host that you Muslims did not even see. So see what Almighty Allah will do for Muslims when our resources are together. When our hearts are together. When our minds are put together. When a Muslim from all the way in Philly or Muslim all the way in Alabama or Muslim here in San Diego or Muslim all the way to the end of the land or the end of the world when a Muslim opens his mouth in Africa a Muslim in America responds in Middle East a Muslim in Europe responds when we come together as one Muslim ummah even we have no strength whatsoever and our own op opponents will go against us so long as we together, nobody will be able to conquer because then we have the power and strength that nobody can see but Allah. That's the message. أرسلنا عليهم ريحا وجنودا لم تروها وكان الله بما تعملون بصيرا and Almighty Allah forever and ever He is aware and He sees whatever you do. 
Remember when the host came from the top of you. Wamin as minkum, and beneath you they also popped up. Jumping up from the bottom, coming from the top, and also from as minkum. That's when Zaratil Abasar, when the eyes and the sides were gaped. And the hearts of people reach to the highest level of their throat out of fear. So this is what happened. And this is what Almighty gave. So this is what? A message to all as Muslim Ummah. So this is what we have to ponder. This is what we have to think about. And this is what we have to get as a message from Almighty. And that's when the people were divided into two. The Muslim community were divided into two. The first were a group of Muslims who really were not Muslims, but they claim faith. And on the other hand, you have the pure believers. So basically, we have the hypocrites and we have the true believers. Almighty Allah said, because of this fear that the non-believers cause, to disturb Muslims, people were divided into two. The Muslim communities were divided into two. The first, you have the true believers. And the second, on the other hand, you have the hypocrites. What did the hypocrites say? Almighty said in the same surah, the same verses that you heard, The hypocrite said, you know, the reality of the matter is the promise of Allah and the promise of his message is nothing but a delusion. They just lied to us. Allah lied that, you know, he will support us, but see the type of the, the state of fear that we're in. That was before the victory. So they said, Allah promised us, but that was nothing but to deceive. Prophet promised us, but that was nothing but a lie. And some of them came, they said, oh, prophet, our houses are empty. And our families, nobody to take care of them. So are we allowed to go home? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they are only asking for excuses. But the reality, of, the reality of the matter is that they wanted to run. Their houses were not empty. And their families were not even in need of them. illa firara. They only wanted to what? To run away from the truth. That's what happened to the hypocrites. But as for the believers, when they saw the fear and the waves of panic being sent from the disbelievers and disturbing Muslims, when they saw that the disbelievers are about to gain the upper hand on them and that they are overpowered, that's when the true believers said, Sadaqallahu wa rasulu. This is the promise of Allah and his messenger that we will what? We will gain power and we will be the rulers of the world. But before this, we will what? We will struggle and we will suffer. This is the struggle that is coming today. So what we see today, the suffering and the confusion and all the power that the disbelievers have is all ephemeral. And that's only short living because Muslim, we're going to come back to overpower them. So if we are weak today, this is to confirm the promise of Allah. وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ When the believers saw the confederates coming against them and trying to kill them, they said, indeed, this is the promise of Allah and his messenger. And the promise of Allah and his messenger is nothing but what? Al-Haqq, the truth. That's what the believers said. And then Almighty gave us what some of them did. Min al rijal. Among the believers are what? Among the believers are what? Are the real men. They fulfilled their own promise. What did they do? They fulfilled their own promise. So this is what happened. The believers said, this is the promise of Allah. And then Almighty Allah gave us a stamp that among the believers, they are what? Men. He did not say among, among the believers, there are some people or some, you know, individuals. He said they are men. 
who stick to their own promise that no matter what will happen, their faith will still be maintained. One of them is Anas ibn Nadr. And some scholars said this verse was actually revealed because of his commitment to the deen. Of course, we know that most of us, we are aware of this companion, Anas ibn Malik. But there's another companion who was actually the uncle of Anas that we all know, the son of Malik. The well-known and the oldest Anas among the companions is Anas ibn Nadr, not Anas ibn Malik. It's Anas ibn Nadr on the day of Uhud. He saw people sitting because Iblis, Satan, came and said, Muslims, what you fighting for? Don't you know Muhammad is killed? See, always Iblis or Satan or devil will keep on coming with different information just to what create confusions. And sometimes Iblis will do that through some people among us so that we will be what separated, this person here and the other person over there, and our communities are not sticking together. So Shaitan is still doing that today. On the day of Uhud, he shouted, Qutila Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad is killed. So Muslims, what you're fighting for? Some of the companions, they went and sat. They said, if Muhammad, peace be upon him, is killed, so what's the point? He is the leader and the most Islam that he came with. He's the preacher. He is gone. So they sat. And as Malik passed by them, he looked at them. He said, what you're, what you're sitting for? Ma'aqadakum. What caused you to, to stick to the ground and sit down? They said, you didn't hear that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is killed? Anas ibn Nadr shouted with very powerful sound and voice. He said to them, In kana nabiyullahi qad qutila, famada tasna'una bil hayati ba'da. If Prophet is killed, what do you need to leave in this world for? Qumu famutu ala ma mata alayhi nabiyullah. You also go and pursue the same path that Prophet sallallahu pursued until he was killed. Sahaba said, that was like a medicine. That was given to us. All of us jumped and we went back. But at the end, we realized Iblis was the one who shouted, Prophet wasn't even killed. But were there to sit down without Anas ibn Nadr's voice, what would have happened? Gone. And that's when Prophet was left by himself because the companions, they were away. And they were far away from Prophet. And he was sitting and he was in the middle of the enemies by himself. And Miqdad said, By himself standing, no companion around him, no I lie next to him, all now believers surround him, why? Because his companions left him, they thought he was killed, and they caused this confusion and separation. So Muslims, the same thing is happening today. The reality may not be what we're hearing, but we will just take to what we're hearing and listening to different people, and our communities are not even together. I ask you right now, a person sitting next to him, that's your Muslim brother. A person sitting next to you, my sister, that's your sister in faith. But do you even know, I can almost guarantee you, 90% of us sitting here, you ask, what's the name of the one sitting next to you? You can't even say it. Just his name. But we've been praying together in the same masjid. We've been coming together in the same umbrella. But we don't even know the names of each other. Do you think we will be able to even identify our families? The meaning of community had diminished and people are not even feeling the deen. Because if we're not together as community, we cannot feel the deen. We may think we're doing something great, but community or most Islam was built based on this uhuwa, brotherhood and sisterhood. Anas ibn Nadr is the medicine to the companions at that time. Can we also have Anas ibn Nadr today when people are causing confusion, some to be like him and put our communities together? That's what we need as Muslim Ummah. If you together, even you do not have enough resources to move forward, as Almighty promised by verse number 9 of chapter 33, we're good to move forward because then we have resources and power that nobody can see. Is that of Almighty Allah. Here is another man known as Haram ibn Milhan, and we will close since time is up. Our khutbah time given to me is up. Haram ibn Milhan, have you heard of this companion before? 
Aram ibn Milhan was his name. If you do not even benefit from this khutbah, but this name, just take it in your pocket. And whenever your iman is weakened or coming lower and lower, remember the commitment of this man. Haram ibn Milhan. إمام سوى أن الشجاعة تتاجه هي زبر سوى أن الغابة تتهابه That was the man whose commitment was maintained and almighty refused but to allow his name to remain to the day of judgment Haram ibn Milhan one of the companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he witnessed Badr, he witnessed Uhud he was in the battlefield Bi'r Ma'una the battlefield and this believer came and he stabbed Haram ibn Milhan from his back. He stabbed him from his back until Haram ibn Milhan saw the sword that the disbelievers, you know, stabbed them with right here in front of his abdomen. He looked at that sword that he was stabbed with by that disbeliever. He held the sword with both hands and he looked toward Damu Yanziv and the blood. Is dropping. Do you know what Haram ibn Milhan say? Do you know what he said at that day? Do you know what came out of Haram ibn Milhan's mouth? He said the following statement: Fuz tu wa Rabbil Kaaba, Fuz tu wa Rabbil Kaaba, Fuz tu wa Rabbil Kaaba. Three times I have succeeded by the Lord of Kaaba. I have succeeded by the Lord of Kaaba. Indeed, I have succeeded by the Lord of Kaaba. The one who stabbed Haram, he said, what's wrong with this guy? I'm stabbing, killing me, say he succeeded. He said, what did he succeed with? And what did he get after about to meet his demise, about to die, and still saying he had succeeded? Haram ibn Milhan said, because this is the Islam that I've lived for, and the promise of Allah is that I've died for this faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he allowed the one who stabbed Haram ibn Milhan, the person that stabbed Haram ibn Milhan from the back, he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He became a Muslim as a result of what he heard from the one whom he had killed. So look at the companions, Akhi. They were dying and still inviting non Muslim to the deen. They're losing their lives and still keeping their commitment for this faith. So Islam is not a joke. Islam is not a game to play. That, you know, if I don't like what you are doing, I just move forward and go open my own community and start running. That's not how Islam worked. Where Sahaba, do you think they did not have differences among them? They did. But when it comes to Islam, they put all aside. They had their own differences, but they kept the same mission, that this is what we wanted, and they kept themselves up to the goal. So if that was Haram ibn Milhan, Losing his life and still inviting to the deen. You sitting here, nobody had stabbed you. What did you do for the deen? You sitting here, nobody has stabbed you. What is your commitment for Islam? Islam today is just occasional things. If something happens, we pop up. If none happening, we just stay behind. If we were the companions and the companions are today here, they wouldn't have been even Muslims because the deen would have been killed. But that was their commitment for you and I and all of us to benefit from this faith and from this deen and through collaboration, through being together, forgetting about the division and keeping Islam real and practicing it daily and bringing it to fruition and allowing the non-Muslims to see it and changing their situations and the situations of those around them and making a person who has nothing, he's only a zero into a hero and a person who is below to being on the top. And the non-Muslims saw themselves that, yes, these people that took shahada, they were even worse in Jahiliyyah. Do you think Sahaba were the best? They were the worst in Jahiliyyah. But when they became Muslim, what happened? They became the best of the best. That's how they were. Who used to kill their own children in Jahiliyyah? Babies. They were not the ones. The verses of alcohol was revealed for different people or the same people. The verses of gambling, the verses of fornication, the verses of stealing were revealed for different people or the same companions. 
the same. So they were the worst in Jahiliya, but Islam made them the best to the day of judgment. So that's what Islam is supposed to do to you. If you're the worst, then say, you know, when I was a kafir, I did too much. I don't think God will forgive me. No. Come into it. Allah will accept you, and you will be the best of your time as well. So this is the proposition of today. Sorry, maybe it's a little bit beyond what is expected. Or maybe it's a little bit fiery. I apologize. And I ask the brothers to please forgive if we've won maybe a few minutes on that which was given. قَدْ قُلْتُ مَا قُلْتُ إِنْ صَوَابًا فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ ذَلِكَ فَمِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْهُ بَرَاءَ الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب الهنا ويرضى اما بعد brothers and sisters in faith in the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه وسلم we have the best example and the best behavior and the best in everything when companions lost hope prophet did not they left him by himself but he did not say why y'all guys left me Rather, he was patient, and he still called those who said the prophet was only a liar and that the promise he gave us and that which came from Allah is nothing but delusion. Prophet Sallallahu persisted, and he continued to call them until most of them that were hypocrites, they changed to be true believers. And the strong you hate, the strong you love once you switch. So this is what happened, and that was the message that we wanted to share with you today. So remember that in Prophet Sallallahu we have the best what? The best example. And in Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have the best conduct. And he, peace be upon him, had left the deen. But when he left the deen, his companions after him, they, take it, they took the deen to the next level. The level that he left it, because the purpose is not for the deen to die after him. And Abu Bakr said it, if he is gone, the deen is still there, and the Lord who sent him with the deen is still there. So they took the deen to the next level. The people in San Diego, are we willing to take it to the next level? I hope and pray that Almighty Allah will use you for his deen. And I pray that Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the unity to come together. And whosoever will be a cause of your division, may Allah kick him out of your community so that you all can stick together. I ask Almighty Allah to make your families, your businesses, your resources all together for your own benefit in dunya and also to benefit you in hereafter. And we ask Almighty Allah to allow the young generation to pop up and have the same commitment like the companions did for the deen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you the Muslims here in San Diego, Muslims in America, and Muslims around the world to be a master of resource and also about bringing peace to whoever wants the peace so that everybody can enjoy and know the purpose of this message that Prophet left so all of us can be together, enjoying it, and Muslims to be under his banner in Jannat al firdaus all together. Ameen. Allahumma izza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Wa a'li bi fadlika kalimata al-haqq wa al-deen. Labbayka ilahi wa sa'adayk. والخير كله في يديك نحن منك وإليك ثم الصلاة ما تغنى الشادي على محمد النبي الهادي ما هتفت ورقاء بالنياح وغرد القمري في الصباح واقم الصلاة من دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا